All right, so here on my left, I have a table from Wikipedia that contains information on the fastest cars in history. And as you can see in the left column, we have top speed. And on the right, we have engine specifications. And uh, what I want you to look at is the power of the engine. So here is 119, here is 158 kilowatts, and it keeps rising as we go further in time. And so does maximal speed. So it is interesting to learn the dependence between max speed and engine power. What is the relationship between them? And of course, natural idea is to plot a graph. So what I want you to do is to plot a graph of power against top speed using these data points. So for example, we will have a point 158, 242.5, and so on. So try putting these points onto a grid and see if you can guess a relationship between them. So here's the graph that I got where these different colored points correspond to my data sets uh, from the table on the left. And this black line is the line that I built myself by first noting that the curve on which these points seem to belong to is uh, that of a cubic root. But then of course I had to play around uh, with the coefficient c in front of it to make it go exactly through my points. And it seems like a very good fit. So it turns out that power is proportional to top speed cubed. In other words, if you want to increase your top speed by two times, you will have to increase your power by eight times. And this is the main conclusion that we draw from our empirical observation. So let us now go and derive the reason for it. So here is our setup. We have some kind of car that moves along a road at speed V. And air resistance is basically coming from the fact that the car collides with air particles. So air drag comes from collisions with air particles. And the question we want to answer now is what amount of air does the car hit during some time that we denote as delta t, uh, which is customary in calculus. So we can simplify problem a bit by assuming that our car is effectively something cylindrical. So let S be an 
an area of a cross section of a car. So let it be this area. Okay, so after time delta t, we covered v, v times delta t uh, of distance. So now we have some cross section S that moved along a distance of V delta T. So the volume of displaced air or the volume of air that the car came in contact with is simply this area times the height of the cylinder. So we get S times V delta T. Now I want you to recall that density is the ratio of mass and volume. And since we are interested in the force, because air drag is a force, we want to be able to derive mass, so mass becomes rho times volume, and in our case, it's going to be rho times s times v times delta t, and this rho is the density of, of, of the surrounding air, and we can assume that it's constant. So that's the mass, sorry, so this is the mass of air that we displaced uh, during time delta t. So here is our result and now we can use Newton's second law which states that the force exerted on a body is its mass times acceleration. And here we will be calculating the force that air experienced due to the car movement. So what we get is rho times s times v times delta t and during time delta t we assume it was stationary so it gained speed v we can assume this because the car any car usually moves much faster than the air does so this is our increase in speed uh, v so delta t cancels and we get some quantity that's proportional to v squared, which is uh, quite close to what we want. Because now we understand that power, power is work done per unit time, and work is basically force times distance, let us call it d, over t, but d over t is again v. So we get rho s v cubed. And this is exactly what we predicted, because now we have this cubic term uh, above our speed, and we have a physical explanation for why cars increase their engine power the way they do.